What is up everyone, Jay here with another Fire Emblem Heroes video and today we're going to take a look at the next mythic which is the Quieting Blade of the Quieting Hands one of the new OCs um, I'm going to butcher her name because I'm very bad at pronouncing these uh, you know, Norse names but Hares Velger, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong but she is a light mythic and a blue beast flyer and she's very strong, she has the Quieting Claw which gives her minus one cooldown and also inflicts exposure and speed defense minus seven um, and a penalty that neutralizes, no okay, so also neutralizes miracle effects, which is very good uh, in case they have that. So this is all applied on the nearest foe and foes within two spaces of them through the next actions. At the start of combat, if she's alive, grants plus five to all of her stats and inflicts minus X to everything except res on the foe. X equals the number of foes within two spaces of target with bonuses or penalties active on them. Okay, excluding target times three plus four maximum ten. Uh, and deals Y damage, so this is the flat uh, slash, you know, true damage that is in percentage base, which is very strong, similar to the flat damage reduction. So Y equals total number of bonuses and penalties active on a foe and any foe within two spaces of foe, excluding stat bonuses and stat penalties. So basically, she'll deal more damage and inflict more stats, uh, stat debuffs on the foe, depending on how many bonuses or penalties they have on them, aka status effects, not actual stat buffs. So uh, that's very strong and uh, excluding stat bonuses again. Yes, I, re I already read that. Times three, excluding when dealing damage with an area effect special, reduces damage from foes attacks by 40%, which is pierceable and also has uh, damage reduction skills by 50%. And then start of turn, she has the, uh, you know, the standard beast flyer transformation, which gives her the extra movement and plus attack or plus two attack and then she comes with a new beast special which i assume is inheritable nimble beast so beast units uh are have been eating a lot with some of the new skills which is good because i always felt like they've been kind of behind and lacking with some of their options so nimble beast is not the only skill she actually brings to beast so this boosts damage by x percent of unit speed so we have a speed based beast special finally and uh this is up to 50% if you're transformed and otherwise it's 40%. So still, even if you're not transformed, you get a nice 40% uh, speed boost damage, which is nice. If both of the following conditions are met, reduce the damage from the foe's next attack by 40%, which is flat because it's in the special. Unit or foe special is ready, or if unit or foe special triggered before or during this combat and unit is transformed or unit speed is greater than or equal to foe's speed. So kind of like godly reflexes, I think. So kind of works like that. But yeah, Nimble Beast is very good for all those fast beast units. And of course, she's going to be blazing fast. Attack Speed Fortune is another beast skill, which is going to give her... Uh, let's see. If unit can transform, transformation effects gain. If unit is within two spaces um, of a beast or dragon ally, or if a number of adjacent allies other than beasts or dragon allies is less than or equal to two, as a trigger condition in addition to existing conditions. So... Basically, I think the skill is just trying to make it easier for Beast to transform. I mean, uh, I think Faye and the developers have realized that, you know, Beasts, not only have they been lacking in skills, but they also kind of have that downside of having to transform to really make use of their, you know, unique characteristics. So this skill um, makes it easier to transform, I suppose. And, you know, we had, like, uh, all the other Beast skills, like the Beast B skills. Um, so yeah, this is another one of those. So basically transformation effects gained if units within two spaces of a beast or dragon ally. Cause before you'd have to be alone or directly adjacent to one, I think. So now it's just within two spaces or if a number of adjacent allies other than beast or dragon allies is less than or equal to two. So you don't have to have, you know, a beast or dragon next to you. You have this skill, which is nice. And if you're defending an Aether Raids at the start of enemy turn one, if conditions for transforming are met, unit transforms. So this is good for those beast units that want to transform. Obviously, um, you know, her is available here. It's not, she's not a defense mythic, so it's kind of awkward, I suppose, but it's good for, uh, well, I mean, the speed ver the speed variant is not very good on like Formortis or, um, you know, Bandage Lady, because they're slower. So I guess you'll have to wait to really optimize them with a better version of this, but still, this is nice to have. And then if units transform or foe initiates combat, grants attack speed plus eight, and also neutralizes foe's bonuses to speed defense, and has 7 HP healing. So nice uh, combat as well. So attack speed fortune is going to be really good on her failure, and she also is going to be able to use this at least in chaos season if you really want to use her because it feels, honestly, with her kit, she kind of feels more like a defense mythic than an offense mythic, I feel like. I mean, she's going to be good in offense for sure. Don't get me wrong. But for defense, uh, she's going to be also very useful, even more useful, you could argue. 
Uh, she comes with SD Near Trace 4, which we've seen before, and Divine Talon. So this is a really nice C skill that just gives her support. So at the start of the turn, neutralizes any penalty effects on unit and allies within two spaces of unit. So kind of similar to Dumbbell Beastman, who can also cleanse himself. Um, so this excluding penalties inflicted at the start of the same turn and deals one damage to the unit and allies within two spaces of unit. Okay, so it deals her damage. I guess that's uh, that's interesting because... She doesn't really have any desperation effects or like anything that requires her to lose HP. So I guess, I don't know what this is for. I mean, this is useful for vantage strategies for sure. If you want to do ardent sacrifice or reciprocal aid stuff. But um, that's interesting that she deals recoil damage to herself, kind of like Bernadetta. As our turn, she grants unit can move one extra space to dragon, beast, infantry, and armored allies within two spaces of unit. So this is what I mean why, why I said that I think she's, she feels more like a defense mythic with something like this because, you know, stuff like... Uh, Nabata Green can do this similarly, but now she has even more of a range of, you know, class types. She can do it for Dragon, Beast, Infantry, and Armored Allies, which is very good. Um, so, I mean, maybe not as useful for Armor units, but for Infantry, Beast, and Dragon, that can be very useful and annoying. And uh, helpful for offense matches, because you can reach, you know, if you're using Gale Force especially, this can open up strategies. And then if units transform or foes HP is greater than or equal to 75% at start of combat, grants plus 5 to all stats, no follow-up, no guard, and also reduces damage from foes attacks by X during combat, so this is the flat damage reduction on top of the true damage reduction or true damage she had with the Y in her weapon. So X equals the number of spaces from start position to end position of whoever initiated combat times 4, maximum 12, and also foes attack trigger foes special, reduces damage by X. So... She gets a lot of flat damage reduction, which is going to really help her survive those initiations. And Null Guard is also, you know, that's a given. Null Guard is so common nowadays. Null Follow-Up is amazing because now you don't have to outsource it. So Divine Talon is going to make her uh, very, very strong and also gives her some support with that extra movement for her allies. So, you know, she's a pretty straightforward mythic, I'd say. I'm kind of, I, I do kind of appreciate it. I love her beast design. It's pretty cool, even though her weapon is still... You know, mouthful. Overall, it's not that hard to understand her. She's a very straightforward mythic. Um, very offensive in nature, obviously, but also can support with that movement. And uh, be deceptively bulky. Kind of just like her... Uh, was it her brother? The, the dumbbell guy? I don't even remember. I don't pay attention to the story too much, guys. But he also has, uh, you know, the flat damage and the flat damage reduction. Or the true... I don't even know what the right word for it is because we've seen true damage before with a percentage. I guess it's still true. But you guys know what I'm talking about. So here she is taking out Valentine Ephraim, who's a very bulky armor. And she can uh, take hits and then retaliate with Nimble Beast. She has little guard. She has pretty much everything you want from an offensive unit like her. And she has extreme range being a beast flyer. And can also make her allies move farther. So that's really useful. So she's pretty great. Um, I'm honestly kind of surprised they didn't put her on a double mythic. You know, the uh, for November they usually save those with her sister. Her hot drunk sister. But they... I guess they wanted to separate them. So here are the rest of the units on the banner. We have Embla in red. We have um, Fallen Ursula, uh, Vale, Legendary Male Alir. We have uh, Legendary Male Corin. We have Edward. We have uh, Attuned Erica, Ford, Need of Alir, uh, Bandage Lady. I'm not going to try to pronounce his name. And uh, Dear Dumbleman. So really stacked banner overall. This is one of the more stacked banners in a while. Maybe not in a while, but uh, I'd say the... The last really stacked one I can remember was the one with uh, Shez and Ike. I don't remember who was on Sigurds, but overall this banner is really stacked because you have, there's pretty much no duds except for maybe Embla. Um, but Embla's still useful to, you know, negate saves, but, you know, as a unit and combat, she's not the strongest anymore. But still, I'd say she's probably the worst unit overall in this banner. Maybe Ford, you can argue too, but uh, the colors are pretty good because you have... Obviously, you have uh, Harris Velger, who's in the blue. You have her sharing with Ursula. And you also have her sharing with Vale, who... You know, Vale, uh, she's not a bad mythic at all. She provides a scout effect, so um, blue's pretty good. Then for red, you have Edward, who's one of the best sword omni tanks in the game. You also have... Um, who else? Embla. Embla, again, is kind of a dud in Ford. You know, he's actually a pretty strong Lance... Or not Lance, Sword Cavalier. Who can be deceptively strong he comes with speed defense unity he's the only unit in the game right now with that so that can be useful for some tanks and then colorless you have dear dumbleman need of alir and uh legendary male alir who is also one of the better omni tanks in the game and you know dear dumbleman is deceptive he's just super annoying to deal with if you don't separate him from his allies he can be very very annoying he hits like a truck 
And the Nita Valir is a really easy unit to use with his AoEs and just hits like a truck as well. And then green, you have a Toon Erica, who's one of the best vantage units in the game and one of the best tanks in the game. Um, even if she's not relying on vantage sweeping, she can still take hits. And then you also have legendary male Corrin, who provides high dragon wall, which is, I think he's the only unit with it right now still. So if you want that skill for arena and just having the anti-warp, he's very useful for that. And then um, bandage lady, we already know how, what she does. She's very annoying to take out and her ability to refresh your allies with the support, with the Breath of Life and everything. So she's one of the best units in the game, one of the best defense mythics in the game. So overall, this banner is very, very stacked. Every color has something of value for fodder and just unit-wise. So um, yeah, this banner is very good. I'm going to skip personally. No one here really interests me that much. I mean, I'd love to get another Erica for skill duplication and null counter disrupt, but uh, I'm good. I'm finally starting to save my orbs again. So you know, when the holidays come up, if someone shows up that I really like, I'll be ready, hopefully, because I I just reached like 100 or around 100 orbs. So yeah, that is the banner, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this mythic hero. Again, I'm kind of surprised she's not, you know, having a double double mythic with her sister. I kind of expected that next month, and then maybe this month we got a main mythic character like Athos, because Athos has been <laughs> he's been in the waiting room for a while, and there's just so many lore characters and mythics they can use from the final series that they haven't used yet so i mean i don't blame them but i'm kind of surprised they didn't save her for sharing with her sister but yeah that is the banner guys uh, let me know what you guys think down below and good luck on your summons if you are summoning please leave a like if you enjoyed listening to me ramble as always and please stay safe out there peace out